still lynch ya. But he did. And he lasted, I think he lasted about a week and a half. Now there is not long to go. The transfer window will get slammed shut tomorrow evening. And if you think West Ham are done, then I wouldn't go to bed. The famous words from our current owner, Mr. David Gold. Roll the titles for today's show. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, like I am kind of looking forward to the transfer window closing because I want West Ham to really get on with the season, get the players that we've currently got in to gel together and work together in unity to try and push us up the league and try and challenge for Europe, challenge for the Conference League, challenge for the FA Cup, any domestic cups we possibly can and push forward in the Premier League. So it will be a bit of a blessing when the transfer window does close and West Ham and us fans and David Moyes and the coaching team know exactly what we've got to work with until the January transfer window when it all starts again. And it's going to start again probably a month after this window closes because that's just what happens when you are dealing with transfer windows as such. Now, we've brought in players. We've brought in eight players. And yeah, you can question, you can easily say that you, they've brought in real quality to West Ham, real, real quality and replaced, you know, not like for like, but we've raised the bar. We absolutely have. We have to wait and be patient and see what these players are capable of doing. However, we definitely have raised the bar. But David Moyes has hinted that he's not done here with a whole host of potential links coming to West Ham and a whole host of players heading out the door. So without further ado, I think we'd be as well starting today's show. Um, and, you know, today is we're talking about Aaron Wan-Bissaka because apparently, according to reports, um, West Ham are extremely interested in bringing him in. Now, we have been busy. And no, uh, as we know, and Paqueta was West Ham's eighth summer signing uh, that's taken West Ham spending close to £180 million. But no sooner was the ink dried on Paqueta's West Ham contract that David Moyes is starting to look at other clubs and other players for bringing him in. And it looks like wan could be one of the players um, because, you know, at right back, you could question, especially with Ben Johnson's injury and maybe recently the lack of pace that Vladimir Safal has got. And then you're starting to hear rumours that Harrison Ashby could be heading out the door to Newcastle. And I really hope that doesn't um, that, that, that doesn't happen. But with Safal's form and the fact that he turned 30 last week and Ben Johnson again picking up an injury, you can't help but think that maybe we are looking for a future option in that position. Now, according to reports, Manchester United have supposedly rejected West Ham's offer and Crystal Palace's first opening offer for the defender. But there could be a big twist in the matter because Manchester United's boss, Eric Ten Hag, has launched a move for the Barcelona right back, Serginio Dest, and is confident that he will get that done. But that really then would be leaving the door open for Juan Basaka to leave the club. Now, things to take into consideration for Juan Bissaka is Will Salthouse. Will Salthouse owns Unique Sports Group, who is the agency whom loves to do business with West Ham. But on top of that is the agent for Max Corney, Mickey Antonio, just to name a few, um, Aaron Cressy, Craig Dawson, who we're talking about in a second. You know, So there's several West Ham players there that he's involved with that could, you know, sway in the decision and getting him to come to the club and i think you know wan Basaka, he gets forward he's pacey he's he, he's definitely capable of doing a job he did sign for a huge transfer fee crystal palace look like they want him back west ham will be looking at him as well and david moyes may be hoping that he can pull some of the the the, the you know the, the pulling power that he potentially has 
by signing recent players he's got and the connections he's got with the former club. But let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on potentially bringing Juan Basaka to the club. I mean, I don't mind it as such. It's just, it really depends on where it puts Harrison Ashby because I really do rate him. Um, and it concerns me then if you bring in Juan Basaka because then you've got, you know, Vladimir Safal, you've got Ben Johnson who's going to come back from his injury. And where does that really push? Um, uh, where does that really push Harrison Ashby? And that's the biggest concern I've got. So next up, let's talk about the next player that West Ham are linked to. Now, we do know and have been hearing today that David Moyes is potentially open to letting Craig Dawson leave the club. Now, he is down the pecking order. We've got injuries and there is going to be problems um, for him finding some game time at West Ham. He does live further north than London and there is a rumour that he wants to head back up towards the Midlands. Now Aston Villa and Wolves are chasing his signature and he's only got a year left in his contract at West Ham and he could be looking for a two to three year contract at his next club and apparently these clubs are willing to offer that so I really can't stand in the way of Craig Dawson and nobody can have a go at him but then that means we will be leaving ourselves short in that department and apparently according to reports that we are after this geezer, this six foot five Poland international, he is an absolute monster. Jan Bednarik from Southampton, six foot five. And the report goes on to say that Ralph Hasenhutl is open to sanctioning the departure of the centre back prior to the deadline. And they are obviously Southampton looking at neither an option or an obligation to buy clause that could be included in any loan offer, which apparently is what West Ham are looking to do. We, they value him in and around £13 million. Now, while Dawson has been incredibly important for West Ham over the last two seasons, featuring in, you could, well, I think it's like over 56 games out of a possible 76 Premier League fixtures, should he seal his move away from West Ham in the coming days, Bednarik would be and much appear to be something of a, a a person who could definitely take on the mantelpiece for the 32-year-old Dawson. Indeed, over Ben Nerick's 31 Premier League appearances last season, the centre-back highly impressed, helping his side to seven clean sheets, as well as making an average of 2.3 interceptions, one tackle, four and a half clearances, and winning four and a half duels at a success rate of 62% per game. Now, apparently, he's only on around 20 K a week and that's proved and he's proved to be a really strong threat going forward scoring four goals creating one big chance for his teammates in addition to completing 38 passes at a success rate of 82 percent playing 2.8 long balls um, and taking just under one shot per game and that's in comparison to Dawson's 34 fixtures in the last season um, where West Ham kept five clean sheets as well and making an average of just under one Percent interception per game, one tackle per game, 4.1 clearances, and winning 4.1 duels at a success rate of 56% per game. But going forwards, you know, he has scored two goals, provided two assists, and created two big chances for his teammates. And in addition to that, he's completed 30 passes per game at a success rate of 81%, playing three long balls per game. So, as much and as much as Dawson has been such a fantastic servant to West Ham, and he will go down in folklore as being one of those unsung heroes at West Ham. We can't stand in his way if he really wants to leave the club in, in, in good light and prolong his career as much as he can, and we can't blame him. So, I wonder if Bednarik will be the man that will come in and chase and take up the mantelpiece for him. Leave your comments in and let me know your thoughts on him but next up is i mean i'm going to do quick fire rumors that are kicking about west ham supposedly desperately interested in connor gallagher now i've said this for a long time this guy for me and i know russ has been kind of disagreeing with me a little bit thinking that he's going to want um as much game time and and, and maybe he suits crystal palace's style of play i think this guy complements declan rice in the middle of the park highly like i is energy is relentless he is such high energy yes he's got a bit of bite yes he got sent off at the weekend but he is relentless in his approach in the middle of the park and i think that's the engine that david moyes wants conor gallagher is a guy that i think could actually knock tommy suchik off the mantelpiece and actually come in there and really 
really advance our midfield. Now, if, and we've heard that a club has, or Crystal Palace have bid £27 million for this guy, and I can't see West Ham coming in over the next couple of days with an offer for the Chelsea, Chelsea midfielder. So this is something we should keep an eye on moving forward. And again, the rumours are, are really there saying about the Vanekin, Hans Vanekin from Club Bruges. We all know what he's capable of. He is 30 years old, but he is an absolute baller. Progressive player, gets the ball forward. It's just about where he fits in to the system and um, with all the players we've bought. But I mean, he's pretty much publicly spoke out saying that um, he's interested in the move to the Premier League. And it's now just a case of valuations. And if the valuations are met, will West Ham want to pursue this deal for the Belgium international? Now, I do like the looks of Hans Vanneken. However, if it came down to it and you said to me, choose between Hans Vanneken and Conor Gallagher, and then you've got one valued at £10 million, one valued potentially at £30 million, I would pay the £30 million for Conor Gallagher because I really think he compliments. I really, really, really do think he compliments what West Ham are looking for for another player we spoke about today i sorry yesterday was ross barkley um you know my only concern really with ross barkley if i'm being brutally honest here is his injury record i don't think it's great we all know it's not great and it's um but 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 there is a player in there and david moyes has got a history of bringing players who we underestimate as fans and turning them into fan favorites and uh, craig dawson is one of those examples jesse lingard is another one of those examples as well when he signed him on loan so don't put it past us for for looking at something creative and a player like ross barkley he's maybe not past it yet if you put your arm around him you give him something he could maybe really offer us a piece of um or a slice of the cake that he was able to do or capable of doing now last but not least and a departure and i think we're going to see plenty more departures coming from the club but emmanuel longello has left west ham but only on loan for the remainder of the 22 23 season um and he's he's obviously a well-equipped defensive operator he's 21 years old and he's risen through our academy ranks to represent the senior team in cup competitions during recent campaigns but he is going to birmingham on loan for the rest of the season he says he was buzzing to join such a big club like birmingham and help them push in the championship this is a good league and a good experience for me i'm here to play games and get experience as well to come to a team like birmingham it will help me develop a lot and i'm very excited to be here i've got pace and a bit of flair and i can also defend so i've got a bit of everything i've come here to prove myself and i'll tell you what all the best to you um longello because i think you are definitely one for the future you are exciting and I think you definitely, definitely are going to have a very long career. Depends on where that career is going to be. Will it be at West Ham? I'm not so sure. It doesn't mean that he's crap if he doesn't stay at West Ham. It's just it's about finding the opportunities. And the one thing is he was linked to actually leaving the club permanently, but he is and has only gone on loan. So it'll be interesting to see how he develops in the championship alongside Okoflex. And I don't think that's going to be the last. I think we're going to hear a plethora of young players leaving. And I think another player we need to keep an eye on tomorrow is Connor Coventry, because if we are over the next couple of days, sorry, um, if we are looking at bringing in some midfield recruits it's really knocking down the mantelpiece for Connor Coventry to get an opportunity so I think he will head out the door on a permanent move to another club and I reckon they're working on a deal as we speak so keep an eye out for that one over the next couple of days thank you very much for watching stay tuned for the match day live big massive game later on today West Ham Spurs we need to just turn up do a job let's hope Moyes has done his preparation work let's hope they are fit and rearing to go make sure you join us for the match day morning or match day afternoon I should say with Russ and then the match day live later on today when we will be doing our commentary for the show thank you for watching stay safe if you're interested in becoming a channel member hit the join option please hit that subscribe button we're on the march towards um 20 000 subscribers we're getting closer and closer and closer and you can definitely help us by doing it if you're interested in becoming a channel member hit that membership option stay safe and today support the team come on you irons
It's like a family tree, all of you and me.